because by taking up the caliphate as they did, they went against the explicit instruction of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's to accept that they were bad Muslims. And not only them, but the entire community. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. So if you're new to this channel, like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu and we've got other things that we do other than just reactions. You can find our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0 and feel free to subscribe and just watch whatever we post there other than that there's other things that we do which you can find in the description box below as you can tell from the title today i'll be reacting to understanding the sunni shia split and i'm excited to see what this is about so without wasting time by the way i hope you guys are doing all right and are in good health and stay blessed i have a good day or evening whichever one you're having by the time i'm posting this um, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My name is Sophia, I'm your host. The aim of Let the Quran Speak is to help you gain deeper insights into Muslims and Islam as it's practiced here and in other parts of the world. First up on the show, the Sunni-Shiite split. Relations between Sunnis and Shiites in the Middle East are particularly strained these days. Shiites are a minority and they've come under increased attack recently. Has interreligious difference always been a source of conflict in Islamic history? Is it possible for Sunnis to live in harmony with Shiites? Why can't we all just get along? Here to discuss the Sunni Shiite divide, Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center in Toronto. Uh, Dr. Shabir, uh, we've seen uh, in Egypt in recent days um, Shiite atta attacks on Shiites. Uh, there was a rally where Shiites were denigrated, and then soon after, a, a mob attacked Shiites who were in prayer and dragged them in the streets. Um, so, so this is the impetus for this topic uh, that we're discussing. Um, why is there this conflict between Shiites and Sunnis? Th this conflict is, is very old and of course it doesn't need to continue and we should look for ways to put a stop to this uh, so that we can actually all get along. Uh, after all, uh, uh, Sunnis and, and Shi'is um, share so much in common and uh, the difference uh, really hinges on a political question and, and once the difference was established and, and Sunnis and Shi'is went their, their two separate ways on that political question, uh, they also developed uh, uh, slightly different uh, theological outlooks on, on certain bigger questions as, as well. And, and thus they went further apart. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, when did this difference arise and, and how did it become so contentious? Uh, this difference arose soon after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, because uh, the Prophet did not, uh, as, as far as we know, designate specifically uh, somebody to be uh, the political uh, ruler after him. Now, uh, let me put this in perspective. We know that uh, Moses was a prophet, but he was also a statesman. Uh, the uh, Prophet Muhammad likewise was a, a prophet of God in that he delivers a message that he receives from God but at the same time he establishes God's rule on, on earth uh, by, by enacting laws, legislation uh, that are a part of the revealed scripture and then he judges people according to that law. So he was a judge, statesman and also a, a prophet. Now, uh, uh, when, he, when he dies, this job of prophecy ends. Uh, none of his followers will, 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 will now be privy to this divine revelation. But uh, what about the political aspect? There is a state to run here. There, there, there is a country to govern. Well, it's not a country in the sense of today's uh, the use of the term, but it not, nevertheless a, a political entity, mm -hmm. a, a group of people uh, to be governed. Who, who's going to govern them? Uh, he did not leave uh, an appointed person Muhammad to do not. this, yes. Uh, so the Muslim community had to decide for themselves who will, will be appointed. And uh, so the, the, the Sunnis, uh, or those who would become Sunnis, 
and because the division was not there yet. Uh, some people gathered uh, uh, around one supporter uh, or, or, or to support one particular person as a candidate for this position and they thought it was a done deal, we just support this person, that'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, but then Abu Bakr and, and Omar came along and in the discussion that um, uh, followed from this, uh, Abu Bakr was eventually championed as, mm -hmm. as the one to take over. Uh, and uh, according to the Sunni narrative on this, well, Abu Bakr was eventually given popular support and so he became de facto the, the next person in charge. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is mentioned that some of the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, had a different idea. They thought that Ali, who was a part, a, of, the a part of the family, a, a, a cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and also his son-in-law, uh, that, that he should have been the rightful leader. And so a sort of dissatisfaction uh, remained uh, with, with some people who had this view, even if Ali himself did not uh, have it. Uh, but that dissatisfaction dissatisfa uh, eventually would, would grow into uh, what we know today as the Shiite uh, branch. Uh, the, the Shia really means supporter, and uh, in this context it's mean, it means the supporters of uh, Ali. Now, it, it so happens that Ali, this cousin and son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is respected by uh, Sunni Sunnis Muslims as well. as well. I was just thinking about that, yes. Yeah, and in fact he, he did become the fourth caliph, so whereas Abu Bakr became the first uh, and, and two other persons in between, Ali became the, the fourth. And so he's respected by Sunnis as the fourth caliph, but she uh, uh, generally believe that he should have been the first. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they believe that in some sense the Prophet peace be upon him also, uh, not only in some sense, but explicitly uh, designated him uh, as the person to take charge in his absence and obviously after he has died. And mm -hmm. so the, the, the resentment came out of this uh, difference because uh, by, by saying that Ali was explicitly designated by the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, the, the Shi'is by implication seem to be saying and in fact some did say uh, in, in some of their classical books that Abu Bakr usurped hmm. the right of the caliph. Okay. Now for, for, for Sunni Muslims this is unacceptable because uh, Abu Bakr uh, in, in Sunni Islam is one of the best believers we can, we can imagine. Uh, and so too were, was uh, Omar and, and Uthman, they were all righteous persons, the first, second, third caliph. Uh, Caliphs, and also the fourth. But uh, if we are now to accept that, that the first three actually uh, sat in a position that did not belong to them but belonged to Ali and that they should have known that because by taking up the Caliphate as they did, they went against the explicit instruction of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, that's to accept that they were bad Muslims. And not only them but the entire community which uh, seemed to according to Sunni histories anyway, uh, seem to allow for this and, and support these early caliphs, mm -hmm. that, that they were also bad Muslims. Uh, and so you see the, 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 uh, the bad feeling mm -hmm. comes as a result of these two opposing uh, claims. So do Sunnis view Shiites as creating religious strife then? Well, in, in, in early Sunni history, uh, this is how uh, Shias were regarded uh, the, the, the books that came to be written in the second, uh, third uh, centuries of Islam uh, often referred to them as Rafidis, as rejectors, meaning that they rejected the Caliphate of Abu Bakr and Omar in particular mm -hmm. and, and Uthman to boot. Um, uh, uh, and so th this is how the, the, the other side gets represented. Now at the same time it is uh, worth uh, uh, knowing that uh, some of the uh, interpreters on the Shi'i side uh, started to promote the idea that Ali was so specifically designated that he was mentioned in the Quran itself. Mm. And of course Sunnis cannot find him mentioned in, in the Quran. And then the counterclaim from the Shi'is was that, well, the Quran has been changed. And that of course gets Sunnis riled up. And in fact to this day, th this, uh, th the memory of these kinds of claims uh, um, is what sometimes fuels the, the, uh, 
uh, tension between Sunnis and, and Shi'is. Mm -hmm. And if one wants to create a situation of tension, yeah, one would go open up the old books and, and see that this is what has been said and then use this as a reason to have dissension between Sunnis and Shi'is. Mm -hmm. But so if you wanted the reconciliation, which is what we really want, then there is a way forward. Well, we, but we know that these differ differences will probably always exist, right? Well, these differences, in fact, uh, grew out of the, uh, the, the extreme claims of, of both sides. Uh, you know, people tend to do this. If uh, people differ on a small point, sometimes they bring in other stuff. It's almost like the family argument where mm -hmm. there's one little thing that, that uh, the couple is uh, differing at, on at the moment. They bring up old hurts. Like from yeah. 25 years ago. You know, yeah. 25 years ago you said that thing to me. Mm -hmm. So everything gets lumped into this one little uh, moment that it becomes impossible to move forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Sunnis and Shi'is is one big family that need to forget this uh, uh, thousand-year-old division and, and look at the, the problems that we face now. Uh, Muslims now need to be united more than at any time uh, else in, in our history. And uh, in order to be united, we need to forget these old hurts and we need to look at the reality of the present situation. The reality of the present situation is that Sunnis and Shi'is use the same Quran. Mm -hmm. So we unite on this. This is the book of God. We have no other. Okay. Uh, regardless of what has happened in, in the history, we can look at our present situation and say, look, uh, we, we uh, share many common beliefs. And this question of the political succession, this was never a major belief in anything. Look at the Quran as it is now. Uh, does it make it seem that, uh, that the major belief is who will succeed the Prophet, peace be upon him? No. The major beliefs are, are spelled out as certain basic things, belief in God, belief in his uh, um, angels, in his uh, books, his messengers, uh, belief in the last day and resurrection after death, belief that, that, that God is in control uh, or, uh, and in full knowledge of everything that goes on in his universe. These are the basic beliefs of, of Muslims, whether mm -hmm. Sunni or Shi'i. Uh, what are the major practices of Islam? Bearing witness that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the prophet and messenger of God. Uh, uh, performing prayer, giving charity, uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan, performing the Hajj. Uh, this is what we share between Sunnis and Shi'is. Since these are the basic beliefs and practices of Islam and we agree on these things, Let's count how, much, how many things we agree on, and these are important things. What if we differ on some political question? Let's move forward from that and let's unite now uh, before this um, be becomes uh, bad for, for both Sunnis and Shi'is. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Shiites living as, majority, as minorities in majority Sunni countries? Um, what sort of rights sh should they have? Uh, should they have places of worship? Uh, would they be seen as promoting heresy? Um, how should they be treated, that sort of thing? Well, you see, the idea of, of uh, stifling the, the growth and, and development of certain groups because we, we perceive them as heretical, uh, this has no stopping point. It, you, if you keep thinking about who is on the wrong path and how to curb them and so on, uh, this goes on and on until even within a family you have division because somebody says something and you disagree with them. Uh, on the other hand, if we have an open and tolerant society, then we, we allow people to, to voice their opinions. We allow for open dialogue and, and debate. We allow for academic discussions. Uh, and, and, and then everyone feels that they have a right to, to voice their point of view. And no one feels that a particular uh, version of truth is being suppressed. Sometimes when people feel that their truth is being suppressed, that's when they hold on to it even more firmly. But if it's brought forward and discussed and proof and evidence is brought to light on, on the subject, then everyone comes, up, comes out more enlightened. This is part of the problem that we're not allowing for dialogue. Yes, we should allow for minorities to survive in Muslim majority countries, whether it be Shi'is uh, or other sects of, uh, of Islam or non-Muslim religions to, to thrive, just as we have in, in other parts of the world where religions are allowed to coexist together. Mm -hmm. That's very well put, Brother Shabir. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll take a break when we return giving zakah. Very interesting video. Like I said, um, whenever we're divided, it's easy, it's easy for us to be controlled. It's easier for the dictators to not dictators in that way but for people that want to have so much power to divide us and rule us 
at the end of the day if you believe in the same thing why can't we forgive the past let not the past de define our today let not the past define our future sometimes if you hold on to the past you end up blocking many um blessings that may have come your way or want to come your way or were supposed to come your, your way otherwise people should amend the situation and that once the situation is amended or everyone wakes out and forgives the past and forgets the past you will be even an, a greater force more things more positive things will come out of the situation as so long as both sides sit down and just stop whatever is going on unity people should strive for unity otherwise let me know what you guys think and yeah make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video